Okay, so this is section uh, 2.2. We're going to solve the following linear inequalities, and I'm going to do the solution set as interval notation, and then I'm going to graph it. Okay, so let's solve here. All right, so I have 4 plus 3x is less than or equal to x minus 2. Okay, so I want to get my x's, my variables to one side, and then my numbers to the other. So to move this positive x, I subtract x from both sides, and I have 2x, okay, plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, to move my 4, I subtract 4 from both sides, 2x less than or equal to negative 6, all right? You know, this works the same way as your if it had been an equal sign here. The only thing that you might run into is if I'm dividing by a negative. But here, I end up dividing by a positive 2. So I'm not going to flip the sign here on my inequality. So the 2's cancel, and I get x is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so what, what do I mean about flipping the inequality? So let's just pretend, say we work this problem another way. 4 plus 3x is less than or equal to x minus 2. So instead of moving the x over, let's try moving this 3x over. So the opposite is to subtract 3x. Okay. Now when I do this, I get 4 is less than or equal to, now x take away 3x is negative 2x, then minus 2. All right here I would add 2, add 2. And so I have 6 less than or equal to negative 2x. Okay, now typically what I would have done is I would have just divided by negative 2, and then I would have written negative 3 is less than or equal to x. But since I divided by a negative number, the inequality has to turn around. Okay, so that inequality now instead of x being greater than or equal to negative 3, it actually flops. So when I divide, by a negative number, okay, the inequality changes, all right? Change the sign. So we go from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. So I have negative three is greater than or equal to x. Now this is the same as what I got here. So these are the same, okay? Now, why does that work like that? Well, if we think about it, if you went back to this, 6 is less than or equal to negative 2x, okay? How could I move this negative 2x? Well, I could add 2x to both sides, and I have 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0, and I could subtract 6, and now this gets me back to what I had up here, okay? And if I divide by 2... See, it doesn't matter which rules you use, as long as you use your rules correctly, you're gonna get the correct answer, all right? So just be careful, if you divide by a negative number, you need to flip the inequality sign. Okay, let's graph this, all right? So I wanna graph it, and I also wanna do interval notation. So if I graph this on a number line, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that number, negative three, Okay, so usually I just tell my students, put the negative 3 in the middle. Then I want a number on the left and a number on the right. Now on the left, a negative 3, maybe that's, you know, negative 6. I don't know. We just pick a number to the left. And then on this side, maybe that's 0. Okay? Now, x less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so we actually include the negative 3 here. So when I include it, I do a little bracket. Okay, so when I do a bracket, I do it just like this. And then I'm going which way? I'm going to the left, all right? These are all values of x that are less than or equal to negative three. So in high school, maybe you did something like this where you filled in the circle, and then you put your little arrow going that way. Uh, college algebra, we like to use a bracket here because this actually helps us think about interval notation. All right, so this is to graph it, but in interval notation, so interval notation, 
we're using the numbers. So what do I have? I've got negative 3. Okay, so I want all numbers that are less than or equal to negative 3. So that's negative 3. And then everything to the left of negative 3. So this goes off to negative infinity this way. Now I use a parenthesis here. Why? Well, can we touch infinity? No, infinity is a concept. So we can't actually get to it. You can always pick a number more negative. So I get close to infinity, but not quite there. And then I get all the way up to 3, and I include 3, so that's why I have the bracket. So this is my interval notation. All right, cool.